The Pioneer, 21 January 2023, Despite its struggling economy, China is increasing its PLA armed forces. China is preparing to go to war with the US in full force and has been doing so for the past 100 years. Some darn stupid Chinese adventure in the South China Sea or the East China Sea may lead to the next major war. As old as civilization itself are alliances. Alliances with other groups were formed to protect themselves practically every hunter-gatherer tribe that anthropologists have investigated, from the Yanomamo in the Amazon to the Highlanders of New Guinea. However, they frequently also ended up battling individuals they had no beef with, the common reasoning behind alliances is that the enemy of my adversary is my friend, but people frequently forget that the enemy of my ally is also my enemy. The many existing regional coalitions appear to be coming together to form a unified, all-encompassing alliance structure. That kind of system likely shouldn't exist again because it was that system that caused the First World War. There was just one major alliance in the world three years ago, NATO, which was established in 1949, won the Cold War and is currently an alliance looking for a new function. In North America and Europe, almost everyone belonged to it. Aside from that, the US has bilateral alliances or agreements resembling partnerships with several nations in the Middle East, Israel, East Asia, Japan, South Korea, and maybe Taiwan, and Oceania, Australia and New Zealand. China, India, and Russia, three of the most powerful nations on Earth, had no notable military partnerships unless you believe the alliances between China and North Korea, India, and Bhutan, and Russia and Armenia count. In other words, the world was loosely tied, if something terrible happened in one area it might not necessarily affect other nations there as well. The change was sparked by growing anxiety over China's hegemonic rise under President for Life Xi Jinping to supreme power in the Asia-Pacific region and the United States. The US, India, Australia, and Japan formed the Quad, officially known as the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, in response to this. After tense battles between Indian and Chinese troops on the Himalayan border in 2020, India fully joined the Quad, participating in the first joint naval drills with the other three members in 2020. The Quad was founded in 2017, but initially, it was merely a talking shop. Then came AUKUS, an alliance made up of the US, the UK, and Australia whose first duty was to set up Australia's acquisition of a fleet of nuclear-powered attack submarines. Its obvious goal was to oppose China's territorial aspirations in the South China Sea. The framework for an Indo-Pacific NATO with members representing nearly a third of global GDP was essential, Li finished. About 45% of the world's GDP comprises the original NATO members, although the US and the UK are double counted in this reckoning. The rapid formation of a counterbalancing alliance in the region is undoubtedly attributable to China's more aggressive manner under I. Still, the equal and opposing response to this venture was the proclamation of a no-limits collaboration by Xi and Russian President Vladimir Putin in early 2022. All of this occurred before Russia's second invasion of Ukraine in February of last year, having done it once already in 2014. You can see how everyone was mainly responding to actions by the opposing side and why, after realizing how fixated Putin was on his Ukraine legacy project, Xi has officially backed off but continues to work covertly with Russia on his No Limits cooperation. However, the game has begun and it will be challenging to stop it. Germany declared last February that it would double its defense spending, while Japan said last month that it would do the same. Despite a deteriorating economy, China is steadily increasing the size of its armed forces, and it is challenging to ignore Russia's spiraling lunacy. All of the analysts and planners claim to have it under control. We shouldn't be concerned that the formation of the complex alliances that drew everyone into the First World War is happening quickly today. It's a new era now.
My issue is that I cannot recognize what is so unique about this moment. Ukraine does not qualify because it is not a great power, there are no significant concerns of principle at stake outside of the localized and confined conflict in Ukraine, and none of the major countries have plans to eradicate or subjugate the others. The first chancellor of the newly united German Empire, Count Otto von Bismarck, predicted in 1878 that some blasted dumb act in the Balkans will one day spark the Great European War. Once all the alliances were set up, as they did in 1914, some damned stupid thing in the South China Sea might spark the next major war, or the East China Sea, which China should be held accountable for.